First, I want to talk about energy healing called Reiki. Reiki is an energy healing method for stress relief, pain relief, and better health. It's a way of bringing yourself into balance, mind, body, spirit, and emotions, which then increases your sense of well-being and helps your body heal itself faster. It is an energy healing method, but there are different ways that this energy healing method can be taught. So I want to tell you a little bit about practical Reiki, which is the method that I developed, which I consider an unplugged approach that's very appropriate for anybody to learn of pretty much any age and mainstream public, meaning you don't have to have any previous experience with intuition or psychic abilities or healing to learn this. It helps you connect to your powers of healing that you already have and learn to recognize your intuition, which is really the key to learning to do this more than learning um, a lot of structured things to do, which is the way that it's taught in the traditional Usui Reiki approach. So I'm going to go through some ways in which these two methods are different. And you can choose which is the best for you to learn. Traditional Usui Reiki is taught by teaching you a series of hand positions. They say to put your hands in each position and let uh, the energy flow for three to five minutes in each space. Um, practical Reiki is taught without hand positions. It just says it's not really about where your hands are. It's about your intention. Intention is the energy that is basically the creative energy of the universe. I mean, really, in a very broad sense it is. But what intention is, is giving directions, which you can do in your thoughts. I mean, that's where it originates, in your thoughts. Whether you say it out loud, write it down, you express it in some other kind of way, it all starts with your, in th with your thoughts and what you want. That's intention. And Reiki energy is directed by intention. It really isn't about where you put your hands. Your hands really let you observe the energy rather than that you're putting it anywhere because you're really not putting it anywhere. It's going where it needs to go. There are rituals associated with traditional Usui Reiki. There's no rituals with practical Reiki. It's very straightforward. It teaches you how to recognize and use your intuition, which you already have. But a lot of people just don't know how to recognize it, how to observe it, or how to use it. Because we spend our lives just thinking, you know, our five senses, that's it. And anything else we put aside or we ignore or we filter out. But this teaches you how to turn your attention to those subtle signals, what they might be, and how to observe them. It's a whole different approach to teaching. That's why I'm calling it unplugged okay. and practical. There are rules in traditional Usui Reiki. You can do this, you can't do that. Uh, first level, you can do these things. Second level, you can do those things. Practical Reiki is not like that. Though there are three levels, you are completely empowered from level one to do the things that Usui Reiki might say you can't do until level three, or two, I mean, you, you, that you can't do. It's not true. It's just the way their curriculum is structured. However, practical Reiki, you learn to do at pretty much everything right from the get-go. Because once you know that you can trust your intention to direct the energy, you don't really need rules like that. Traditional Usui Reiki, upon uh, level two, you use symbols. And the symbols are meant to direct the energy. Well, guess what? Words are also symbols. It's all about creating meaning. It's all about expressing meaning. It's about expressing intention. And a drawing can do that as well as a word. And if you just intend that a word, that when I draw this drawing, this symbol, it means that the energy should do this or that, you're actually just giving the symbol a step in between the intention and what you want the energy to do. So actually, you don't really need that symbol because it all comes down to intention, which you can express in your words or thoughts. So I don't teach you any symbols, and you can learn to direct the energy very straightforwardly and directly with your intention. Distance healing is taught in level two with Usui Reiki. It's taught in level one with practical Reiki. There's no reason that you can't do distance healing from the very first day. 
It's shrouded in mystery and secrecy. Keep the symbols secret. They are sacred. Practical Reiki is clear and straightforward and meant for anybody to learn. We want more people learning it. We want everyone to feel comfortable using this because it's in you. That's how I feel about it. Traditional Usui Reiki may take you years to learn and master, to get familiar and understand how to do the symbols. Some people may quit after a while because the symbols are confusing. You're afraid of doing it wrong. That creates anxiety, discomfort, um, discomfort with the secrecy, not understanding why things are this way. Practical Reiki is very straightforward, teaches you how to do it, why it works, and you get immediate results because of the way that I teach you how to use your intuition and intention. Intention, intention. Ah, yeah. Then there's that. Traditional Usui Reiki is usually quite expensive, especially the further you get. Practical Reiki, because it's so easy to teach and easy to learn, there's no need for it to be that expensive. I want it to be accessible to everyone. So, therefore, our classes are much more affordable comparatively. Now let's talk about the two steps in energy healing. Intention and attention. This is the most powerful way to strengthen your intuition. With intention, let's, let me talk about life force energy for a minute. Life force energy is what you're guiding when you're using Reiki. Guided life force energy, that's what it means. So you're directing life force energy with your intention to help you come into balance or help someone else's, um, help somebody else receive what they need to come into balance. Okay, so think, uh, how is that possible, right? There's my energy, there's your energy. How can I get from me to you or get some other energy to come in and help me or help you? And the answer is, think of life force energy as it's everywhere and interacting with all of us all the time. We have our own like little bubble of energy in our aura that gets kind of polluted by negative thoughts, stress, frustration, anxiety, and uh, you know somebody mean that some, something mean that somebody might have said to us. Okay. But that's in mine, okay? But between us all, there exists this higher frequency of energy that's not bogged down and weighed down by our polluted stuff. It's clean and clear, like clear water. And we can bring some of that in to help cleanse away the blockages and problems and replenish us where we're depleted. Then we feel better our, and uh, we can heal ourselves faster. Our bodies work more efficiently and we feel more at peace and whole. Um, that's the point. So just like water, okay, I use water as a great analogy for this. Um, where's water? Water is, what's water? H2O. No matter what form it is, it's H2O. Whether it's ice or whether it's mist or whether it's liquid, it's all made of the same basic stuff, right? But it exists in different states. So a heavier state of water might be what's like in us. Maybe we've got liquid water in our bodies mostly, right? Not ice, right? Okay, so liquid, okay? But um, thinking about water just in general, we are interacting with water all the time. We, of course, through our digestive system, also our breath has humidity in it. And our perspiration, water is in, coming out of our bodies when we perspire and evaporating into the air. So every living thing is interacting with water in some way. Um, and the same amount of water that's on this planet has always been on this planet. So every living thing that's ever been on this planet has interacted with the same water through its breath and respiration and its, its um, digestive system. And so we are probably breathing in some water that maybe a dinosaur did, you know, or drinking some water that may have been recycled through the earth or whatever. I mean, it's like, kind of crazy, right? But if you could step back from the planet and if you could see all the molecules of water, no matter what form they're in, you would see this like layer going around the planet and through every living thing on the planet, plants, and animals, and people, and, and down into the earth. It would all look like you know, one layer that's dynamic and acting and moving and all kinds of things. Life force energy is just like that, okay? We affect each other. We can sense each other's emotions, especially the strong ones. Um, and we sometimes, ours will change based on the people that we have in, come into contact with and how they are feeling or what they have said or done. We, we feel differently when we hear certain things, when we talk to certain people. All right. 
So just like water, our energy is affected by each other. And just like water in the air is lighter, we don't really notice it. It's still there. Between us, there is this higher, lighter frequency of energy, and this is the good stuff. So we can actually bring some of this to ourselves or to others to help our systems come into balance. Okay. With intention, all right, we use our intention to guide the energy. We use our intention then to, then we get out of the way. We let it do its thing. We tell it what we want it to do and let it do its thing. We don't have to keep pushing it. Like when you tell a cab driver to take someone somewhere, you don't have to push the cab there. The cab driver drives it because you gave him directions. Okay? Don't push the cab. Meaning you don't have to be like, come on, Reiki, go, Reiki, go. You don't have to keep doing that. That's you're using your own energy reserves. That's not useful. The energy will go based on your intention, your directive. And then what do you do? You can pay attention to what it's doing. Meaning I can use my hands to help me explore what's happening with the energy in these different places. Maybe around my head, around my face, or somebody else's. Why do my hands show me? This is my way of paying attention. So for me, my intuition works in a physical way, mostly. So I notice different kinds of tingles and different kinds of physical sensations when I move my hand around different places. And that shows me the different nuances in the way that the energy is being received during a Reiki session. Okay. It's a gentle, observant state. There are four main ways that your intuition works, and I'll go into that in a different class, but everybody's got them. And all you need to do is to learn which way is the strongest for you and start to observe it, because that observation is like exercise for your intuition and helps it get stronger. Just like if you were lifting weights or doing chin-ups or doing some kind of calisthenic, okay? Exercise gets it stronger and exercise is done by just this gentle observant state of paying attention. The energy doesn't come blasting out of your hands like Shazam. Your hands are there to help you observe the flow of the energy and in, as you are giving it, or not even giving it, you're really offering it as a facilitator to the person who's receiving it, whether it's you or someone else or the animal or plant even. Okay, so your hands actually are not putting it, your hands are there to help you observe it. It's the way I teach this and it really, really is effective. It's just a taste. It's a taste. Okay. And it's because we're all connected, distance healing is possible. I'm going to give you a little bit about what it is and what it isn't. It does not need, it's not bound by the laws of space and time. So you can send healing forward in time, back in time, and to anyone anywhere in the world. And it goes there immediately. There's no lag. Okay. Like, like a phone call. It's, it's just, it's immediate. Um, it's gentle, can't harm you. It's real. It's not fake. It's not your imagination. It's not a placebo. It's not a prayer. Not that prayers are fake, but prayer is different because this is an energy transfer we're talking about with distance healing. It's good for you. It can't hurt you. It's powerful. Um, it's amazing. It can help increase healing in all kinds of ways. And any energy healer that wants to learn this can learn to do that. Here's a little bit about what it isn't. It's not magic. I'm not going to say you're healed. Boom. It's not. It's not intended to replace medical treatment or care. It's intended to help you be able to heal better. And if you need to go to the doctor, you go. Okay. This is not about like that. It's about helping you have a better state of well-being that then you can resist illness and heal faster and feel better emotionally. You can't measure it yet. There's no Reiki ohms or Reiki watts or anything. You can't tell that my Reiki watts are 60 and someone else's are 10. There's no way to measure it right now on a scientific measurement scale uh, exactly. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It certainly isn't evil or against religion. It's an innate human quality. It's something we all are born with the ability to learn and develop and help each other. So anyone that doesn't want to help another person or thinks it's against their religion to help another person, maybe should take another look at what their religion is really about. Um, that's what I think. It doesn't use your own energy. You're channeling, you're directing energy from the universe to another person. 
So therefore, you are a facilitator of someone else's ability to heal when you're practicing Reiki. You are not that person's healer. You are not healing them. They heal themselves. You offer the energy that makes that possible. This is like a major awesome video with lots of information. Energy ethics, because once you learn Reiki, you want to start to heal the whole freaking world. You do. You're like, I'm a superhero of healing. I can do this, and I love to help people. I want to go help everybody. Dial it back, Jack, because permission is important. Just think about, wouldn't you want to be asked before somebody starts offering you a bunch of energy? Maybe you would, because what if that person is maybe someone who's a little icky or someone you don't trust or someone who's um, learned in a way that you don't really think was right or whatever, you know? Maybe you don't want it. Not everybody wants what you have to offer either. They have their own ability to choose. Okay, that's really what it is about the ability to choose. Whatever their misgivings are, they have the right to have them. So it's ethical to ask permission. Remember, we are facilitators of healing, so don't get all ego about it, okay? We help people. We offer energy for them to receive where they need it, and it's not up to us where that's going to go. But it helps, and that's a nice feeling. If you want to send energy to someone in a coma or someone who's unreachable or you don't know them but you heard there was an accident and you just want someone to receive whatever healing they can even if because you don't even though you don't know them okay you can use the cover your butt method this is only to be used in those situations if you can ask the person you should ask them okay so what is the cover your butt method here's the cover your butt method i am now uh, i'd like to send reiki healing to aunt murgatroyd who's in surgery right now if Aunt Murgatroyd's higher self is willing to receive this energy, please let her receive all she needs for her highest and best and successful healing. If her higher self is not willing to receive this energy, please let it go towards world peace or go to the earth or go to my cat. You know, you have a backup plan that's not controversial. You have a backup plan that's totally okay. Okay, let it go towards opening channels for abundance in my life. I mean, hey, that's cool. You know, have a backup plan. That is okay. So that way, I'm not deciding that Aunt Murgatroyd needs healing. I'm offering and letting her higher self accept or decline. Again, the first choice is always to ask permission. But these are only that's only to be used in the case that you cannot, not the case that you don't feel like it or you feel a little uncomfortable. You know, step up. You're going to take on this role as an energy healer, as a light worker. Own it, baby. Represent. I teach people how to talk about this work in a clear and confident way, and that's a really important skill. All right, um, I'd love to know what you think. Feel free to you know, send me some feedback, send me an email, get in touch with me, uh, and let me know what you think. And I hope you found this useful, and I wish you lots of love and blessings. Thank you so much.